to some people, there is an apparent paradox in the universe. On the one hand, the second law of thermodynamics tells us that entropy is increasing and disorder is increasing, and uh, this is inevitable. On the other hand, we know from ourselves, we know from evolution, that there are certainly pockets of things, you know, like you and me sitting here, that are getting more complex from where we started. How can we resolve that paradox? How do we get complexity? H.G. Wells said that humanity's destiny was a race between education and disaster. But that's actually true of the universe, too. That is, it started out very simple in a way, just a big expanding ball of gas. Then it collapsed into stars and started to generate energy out of the mass. And we're in that stage where we're burning mass in the stars uh, and radioactive uh, atoms. And we're using it up and we're building structures using all that surplus. It's, it was, in a way, it was the savings of the universe. Uh, yeah. It's a savings account and we're drawing it out. Uh, but ultimately, it's going to run out. <laughs> and that we call the heat death of the universe. Everything slows down, gets cooler. We, the stars burn out. Uh, the, the galaxies implode. And, and we go into a long, cold night. Um, and we still don't see any way out of that, although let's not forget that we're really good engineers and we may some figure something out here uh, if we could learn to engineer space-time. So uh, this is built into the structure of the universe itself. Uh, and it's that race. Education is, in a sense, like the building up of information. And information is like energy. Uh, and at the same time, you are burning your capital reserve. Uh, and therefore, life is uh, huddled around these bonfires of stars and making its way. And uh, the, you might say this is the greatest of all dramas. Is, is life going to be able to figure out a way to last forever, even after the stars go out? Are we going to get that smart? Can we? Is it possible in the laws of the universe? But how do we start getting that initial complexity? We have this soup this gas, this plasma, mm -hmm. it's all very hot. And then the only real force that seems to work at that time is gravity is gradually, mm -hmm. now we have the stars begin to form. So how do we go from that soup through gravity to the emergence of the biosphere that we have today and millions of species and then the emergence of our consciousness? Mm -hmm. How does that happen? Well, gravity, of course, leads to collapse. Collapse makes high temperatures. High temperatures liberate the energy of atoms, which was buried down in there but couldn't be gotten to in a smoothed out universe. And that light warms planets. Uh, the random processes in ancient seas bring forth life and we go up that giant pyramid. So in essence, we are not violating the second law of thermodynamics because the uh, entropy is still increasing on the overall scale, but in the pockets because of gravity bringing things closer together and generating heat. We then are drawing that heat. Your analogy of uh, in, in economics is a good one. What we are, we are uh, 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 withdrawing the savings. We're spending the reserves that the universe has given us. Yes. Uh, God put the money in the account at the beginning, and we're drawing it out. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think this is the, the grandest of all dramas to be acted on, out on the stage of the whole universe. Can the universe generate life that finds a way to sustain it and keep interesting things happening in principle forever? And we actually don't know the answer to that question yet, even with advanced theoretical physics, there's still some really big issues. But can, if you go forever, or even, even short of forever, can you do that in an increasing, uh, com with, with increasing complexity? Or will you have to, at some point, you meaning the universe, <laughs> personification of the universe, <laughs> will the universe have to start devolving into, in order to stay with some things with less and less complex things? Or can we increase, continue to increase the complexity? Because that's been the history so far. 
-hmm. Complexity has been increasing as the universe has been spending its energy capital and running down, so to speak. We're getting more and more complex things. Can that continue to happen? Well, speaking for the universe, uh, <laughs> Uh, you don't notice it right now, but most of the universe is stone cold mm -hmm. and nothing much going on way out there between the stars. We're in literally the Times Square of the universe right here where all the business happens. <laughs> uh, but even that will will run out of gas, more <laughs> metaphorically. <laughs> um, I think that we fundamentally don't know the answer to whether we're going to be always able to keep some smaller and smaller pocket in this universe being... Uh, active and interesting, uh, while the rest of it goes bland and flat and cold and boring. Well, what what, what are the uh, what, what what are the the parameters that we need to deal with? Because the, there's a law of conservation of matter and energy, so matter and energy. So we 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 ha we always have the same amount, but as it gets entropy increases, the and things the universe expands and accelerates. You mm -hmm. you have. I think I, somebody said, you know, one photon every cubic light year. Yeah. And uh, if you have that, what do you got? <laughs> A very low rent neighborhood. <laughs> uh, but you're right. Everything is going to get that way. But but the question is, what can you harvest? And mm. and the answer is that it, the harvest is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. The only interesting question is, does it go to zero at some point? Even if you go indefinitely far. And we don't know the answer to that yet. Uh, the only scheme I've seen uh, that really makes sense is Freeman Dyson's, in which life uh, manages uh, to hold out in small pockets with energy reserves stored, but then it increasingly adopts this, the strategy of the bears. That is, it hibernates for a while and then burns its energy more furiously and has a good time, and then it hibernates again to get through the infinite winter of the far future. But that sounds like an infinite series that goes to zero, or effectively zero. Well, the trick about an infinite series, is, speaking as a mathematician, yeah. is that you have to be very careful. Yeah, right. You can't tell just by examining a few terms yeah. whether it's going to go to zero, or a finite sum, or infinity. You have to actually yeah. apply a test. And we have not done that yet. Mm. We actually can't do it yet. 